name is Richard Wesley, and it's my privilege to be the pastor here at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. And I am really excited that you are here with us today. Today's Bible stories, there's two of them today. We've got one in Genesis and one in the Gospel of Mark. But today's Bible story coming out of Genesis, in a little while when Robert Knightsky reads that for us, I want you to listen to it very carefully. I, I, I love this story. It's the story of the rainbow. And it's one that most people who were raised in church uh, would tell you, I know that story, and yet an awful lot of people, when I ask them to tell me this story, they get it wrong. See if you can listen carefully and see what maybe some folks get wrong in that story. And then in the story of, uh, uh, of, of Mark, we, we've got a, a, a beautiful story there too, and we're going to tie those together this morning. Welcome to the first Sunday. first lesson this morning is found in the book of Genesis. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature 
of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and the living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Our gospel lesson is found in the book of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Welcome to Lent. Lent is the Christian season leading up to Easter. Now the seasons of Lent and Easter celebrate the most definitive aspects of God's redemptive acts through Jesus. At the heart of the Christian faith is our participation in the life, suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus the Christ as Lord. That is why we enter into this holy season in confession with ashes, and we will conclude it with the fire of Pentecost. In this first Sunday of Lent, we identify with Jesus in his wilderness journey, and the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. Uh, George Harrison wrote up and recorded a song reflecting his own spiritual journey titled, Beware of Darkness. In his song, he says, watch out now, take care. Beware of the thoughts that linger winding up inside your head, the hopelessness around you in the dead of the night. Of course, George Harrison is coming to his spiritual uh, journey through a different Eastern religion, but most of us journeying through Lent can identify with the hopelessness around us and the thoughts that linger winding up inside our heads, causing no end of trouble. We experience the wilderness aspects of our journey, the dark and lonely nights, the fear that surrounds us, the bad news of losing your job, or facing a divorce or illness, Perhaps yours is COVID depression or struggling with school or maybe that person you've set your heart on doesn't want to date you anymore. I remember my doctor's visit after my prostate biopsy. I really appreciate his direct approach. He simply said, well, you have cancer. I don't know any better way to say it than to come straight to the point and tell you. I appreciated that. It was the beginning of a wilderness experience for me, but I appreciated his direct approach. Well, Jesus also faced wilderness experiences. And today's scripture is the best known scripture on that wilderness experience. Mark's story is clear. Uh, <clears throat> listen, listen to how direct 
Mark says this. It says the Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. Do you catch that? The Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. God's loving, kind, compassionate Holy Spirit thrust Jesus into the wilderness. The, our English word drove in our text is a word that connotes this violent thrusting or forcing, if you will. In other words, God pushes Jesus into the wilderness. That's not a picture that I like to think about or dwell on. I don't like it because I also have wilderness experiences. And I know that some of you are going through the wilderness right now. Some of you are just coming out of a fear-filled wilderness experience. But you're still close enough to the wild things in the wilderness to remember the fear, the anguish, and even the pain and suffering. And if God forcefully placed Jesus in the wilderness, how and why did I end up there? It's a valid question. It's a question that Lent begs us to ask. Did God place me in the wilderness? In the shadowy place where the wild things are? I've uh, volunteered in public schools for many years now, usually in middle school. While I was in Washington, D.C., I spent my volunteer day with a teacher who would have me read to the class. I would read one of the popular children's stories, and, and then she would lead the class discussion asking questions that, that caused us to evaluate our own struggles in light of the story that I had just read. I, I think that's what Mark intends here for us. I think Mark expects his readers and listeners to look at our own lives in light of this story where God just forcefully drove Jesus into the wilderness. I think Mark expects us to look at our lives in light of that. Why am I here? What can I take from this wilderness experience that will help someone else? And yes, I mean, what can I take from this wilderness experience that will help someone else? You know, our culture pushes us to think more about what's in it for me, but our faith pushes us to think more of others. What can I take from my struggle, my wilderness experience that will equip me to love someone who is struggling. The Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament reading assigned for today, is taken from the Noah story in Genesis. It's the part with the rainbow that you heard read just a few moments ago that I mentioned at the opening of this worship experience. We usually read this story so haphazardly that we think the rainbow is there to remind us of God's promise. But the author of Genesis says the rainbow is there to remind God not to destroy us. Wow. To remind God not to destroy us. 
That gives me pause for thought. God has to have something to remember not to destroy me. Um, but once we get beyond the shock of those implications, we can bring this new awareness into our wilderness journey. Whether our wilderness is one of God's choosing or one of our own making, God will remember us. God will respond on our behalf. God is for us. So, beware of darkness. Watch out now. Take care. Beware of the thoughts that linger winding up inside your head. The hopelessness around you in the dead of the night. But just because you're in the desert does not mean you've been deserted. God will remember. God remembers us. God is for us. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, through the gift of water you have saved your people from oppression, sin, and death. We, the ones you have chosen to be your own, now come before you in praise and thanksgiving, offering our songs to your powerful name. You have established a covenant with us, giving your word that we would not be destroyed as were our forebears. As a sign, you set in a cloud, a rainbow, that whenever we need assurance, we may find it, but we have not learned. We give in to temptations. We seek to use you to our ends, and we trust in our own power. As you showed your mercy to Noah, show it now to us and forgive us our sins. In the desert, you upheld your son and empowered him by your spirit. So now uphold us with that same spirit that we may proclaim the new covenant entrusted to us, to all the world. We are confronted with the frailty of life. We know and care for many this day who are confronted with their mortality. There are some who face death because of disease. Others feel alone because they are troubled in their minds. Still more are made alien because of their sin and feel sick in their souls. Deliver and restore them. Hear us in the name of him who died and rose again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
So what challenge are you facing right now? Are you in a wilderness experience? Maybe you just came out of one. Maybe you're just entering into a new wilderness experience. I love the words in one of James Taylor's songs. He says, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. Sounds like a wilderness experience to me. I want you to know, beginning this journey through Lent, that you're not deserted. As we reflect on our own lives, especially in light of what God has called us to, it's easy to feel like we're alone. In the midst of a pandemic, in January, I just saw the statistics that, that there was a COVID-related death every 28 seconds all through the month of January. That creates a lot of grief that people are entering into wilderness experiences and journeys. But we're not alone. Sometimes it feels like we are. There's a community of faith that is offered to surround us. And God remembers us. The story of Genesis, God remembers. In the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your journey, if I can be here for you, feel free to contact me. My email is richwesley at gmail.com or stbumc at gmail.com. I'll be glad to talk to you. I hope you have a great day.